just a dog, author unknown. From time to time, people tell me, lighten up, it's just a dog, or that's lots of money for just a dog. They don't understand the distance travelled, the time spent, or the costs involved for just a dog. Some of my proudest moments have come about with just a dog. Many hours have passed and my only company was just a dog, but I did not once feel slighted. Some of my saddest moments have been brought about by just a dog, and in those days of darkness, the gentle touch of just a dog gave me comfort and reason to overcome the day. If you too think it's just a dog, then you will probably understand phrases like just a friend, just a sunrise, or just a promise. Just a dog brings into my life the very essence of friendship, trust, and pure, unbridled joy. Just a dog brings out the compassion and patience that makes me a better person. Because of just a dog, I will rise early, take long walks, and look longingly at the future. So for me and folks like me, it's not just a dog, but an embodiment of all the hopes and dreams of the future, the fond memories of the past, and the pure joy of the moment. Just a dog brings out what's good in me and diverts my thoughts away from myself and worries of the day. I hope that someday they can understand that it's not just a dog, but the thing that gives me humanity and keeps us from being just a man or just a woman. So the next time you hear the phrase, just a dog, just smile, because they just don't understand. This is my dog Leo, he's almost two years old and he's a purebred golden retriever and he is the best dog I've ever had. He's just always so happy, selfless, has the biggest heart, the kindest soul. He really is one very special dog and I can't ever imagine my life without him. He brings me joy every single day. Every time I come home, he's got a big happy smile on his face. No matter how hard my day has been, he's always there for me to greet me. He's been with me for, through thick and thin through happy and sad, he really is my best friend. I just, I just uh... I, I just thought I'd uh, write, write a poem. Do you want to hear Please, it? Oh, yes. Do you want to hear it? Now, that's... Uh, uh, well... They could always start the, they could always start the wedding late, yeah. I guess. <laughs> now, now the, the title of it is, is Bo. That's, that's the name of the dog. He never came to me when I would call unless I had a tennis ball, or he felt like it. But, <laughs> but mo mostly, he didn't come at all. When, when he was young, he never learned to heal or sit or stay. He did things his way. Discipline was not his bag, but when you were with him, things sure didn't drag. <laughs> He'd dig up a rose bush just to spite me, and when I'd grab him, he'd turn and bite me. <laughs> he bit lots of folks from day to day. The, the, the delivery boy was his favorite prey. <laughs> the gas man wouldn't read our meter. He said we owned a real man-eater. <laughs> he set the house on fire, but the story's long to tell. The, Suffice to say that he survived and the house survived as well. And on evening walks, and Gloria took him, he was always first out the door. The old one and I brought up the rear because our bones were sore. <laughs> and he'd charge up the street with mom hanging on. What a beautiful pair they were. And if it was still light and the tourists were out, they created a bit of a stir. But every once in a while, he'd stop in his tracks and with a frown on his face, look around. It was just to make sure that the old one was there to follow him where he was bound. We're, we're early to betters in our house. I guess I'm the first to retire. And as I'd leave the room, he'd look at me and get up from his place by the fire. 
he knew where the tennis balls were upstairs, and I'd give him one for a while, and he'd push it under the bed with his nose, and I'd dig it out with a smile. But before very long, he'd tire of the ball, and he'd be asleep in his corner in no time at all. And there were nights when I'd feel him climb upon our bed and lie between us, and I'd pat his head. And there were nights when I'd feel this stare, and I'd wake up and he'd be sitting there, and I'd reach out to stroke his hair, and sometimes I'd feel him sigh, and I think I know the reason why. He'd, he'd wake up at night and he would have this fear of the dark, of life, of lots of things, and he'd be glad to have me near. And now he's dead. And there are nights when I think I feel him climb upon her bed and lie between us, and I pat his head. And there are nights when I, when I think I feel that stare, and I reach out my hand to stroke his hair, and he's not there. Oh, how I wish that wasn't so. I'll always love a dog named Bo. Thank you.